south of the Pacific Ocean lie the wind-swept Chatham Islands, home to the world's most formidable predators, great white sharks. They've been long feared as lone hunters striking at random, but here, a pattern of local attacks suggests that the sharks are living and hunting in packs. The prospect of these dread predators living like undersea wolves brings scientists and local divers together to track down the true nature of the beast. Of almost 400 known species of sharks, the Great White stands out, notorious as the ultimate killing machine, a roving oceanic assassin that attacks out of nowhere. Its reputation is built on 400 million years of evolution that has honed its senses and its biology. Most fish are cold-bodied, but the white shark keeps critical areas of its body warmed Instead of being lost to the sea, heat generated by deep muscle activity is recycled and warms incoming blood, keeping the shark's core up to 60 degrees warmer than the water. It boosts the shark's metabolism like a turbo engine to give great whites 45% more power than similar sized fish. Warming the shark's brain increases the capacity to process information from a battery of super sensors, such as a huge taste and smell organ, able to home in on prey from a mile away, and a network of hair-lined canals sensitive to the merest vibration in the water, electrical senses that can actually track the nerve activity of prey. The heat-assisted super senses make the Great White a predator without parallel and its warm body means it can thrive even here in the chilled South Pacific, where Antarctic currents make the sea especially productive. In a single day, top divers here can land a harvest with a street value upwards of $40,000. Abalone is in such high demand on international markets. To protect against overfishing, divers are banned from using scuba or other breathing aids. They can work only as long as they can hold a single breath and must shuttle constantly between the seabed and their support boat. While on the seabed, a diver is relatively safe. But every journey to the surface is a gamble. White sharks typically ambush their prey from below, and a surfacing diver is a sitting duck. Another shark attack in the Chatham Islands, the second in two years among the community's 40 divers. It was all fairly quick, and I just knew that I had to get out of the bloody man's mouth. The biggest wound, a 30 centimetre rip, almost from his thigh to his knee. But one leg pretty badly, and when I pulled myself on the naiad, when Tim pulled me on the naiad, that was the first thing I checked for, that I didn't have a leg, and I realised it was just a pretty big hole. Abalone diver Kenna Scully faced three separate strikes as he struggled to the boat, which is unusual. Most great white attacks involve a single strike. Some scientists believe a great white's sophisticated taste sense quickly determines humans are not fatty enough to be worth eating. And so it spits us back out. Three strikes on one diver could suggest three separate sharks were involved. Within 10 months, there was a similar attack. The third white shark attack gives New Zealand the fifth highest attack rate in the world. Diver Vaughan Hill also faced three separate attacks before being rescued. While the bite and spit theory remains hotly debated, the multiple attacks reinforce claims by local fishermen that far from great white sharks being loners, they are hunting the island's waters in packs.
They say further evidence is provided by another pattern of terror that unfolds regularly on these remote islands. The Chathams lie 500 miles off the coast of New Zealand. They sit at the tip of a narrow finger of continental shelf, which protrudes into a deep trench used by many creatures as an oceanic highway from rich feeding grounds of the far south. Large marine mammals, such as these short fin pilot whales, are able to make such journeys because of the concentrated fat in their blubber. Blubber stores more than twice the energy of fish flesh, and white sharks are known to feed on dead whales. But some island fishermen argue that sharks do more than scavenge. They say the sharks work together to herd healthy pilot whales into bays, running them aground in hundreds. Mass whale strandings like this one are a tragedy played out every year on beaches around New Zealand. For now, scientists can only speculate on the reasons. But fishermen say bite marks provide evidence of attack by numerous great whites. The idea of white sharks deliberately working in packs to herd whales is dismissed as pure speculation by many scientists who say it suggests cooperation far beyond anything white sharks are capable of. But others concede it might be possible that a pod of whales in unfamiliar shallows could be confused and panicked by great whites gathering in hope of a feeding opportunity, thereby driving the whales ashore. But the suggestion great whites may work together like a pack of undersea wolves raises questions about the risk Chatham Islanders take in diving without protection. To answer the divers' questions, top New Zealand shark scientist Craig Thorburn has come to the islands to tag and track the great whites. He's brought with him nearly a tonne of equipment for an expedition that will take several months. Craig will seek the help of attack survivor Kinna Scully in a hunt for creatures that nearly ended his life. Just finding the sharks is going to be a major challenge. They remain among the most elusive and least known animals on the planet. Craig's plan is to search close to seal colonies until he locates sharks he can tag. If he can tag several sharks with radio transmitters and then track them, Craig hopes their behavior will reveal whether they do hunt in packs. What he's proposing has never been done before and will take the team into unknown territory. Their first target is off a desolate rocky fortress known as the 44s. It is a staging post for legions of ocean wanderers, including one of the world's largest colonies of royal albatrosses. But the team is more interested in the island's huge colony of seals. Young seals have exceptionally high levels of blubber that may tempt adult white sharks. Here, a shark could easily blend with the rocky seabed to get close enough for an ambush. <laughs> 